Happy to be joined by Aaron Blanchfield, who is taking on Tyler Santos this Saturday. Uh, phen phenomenal matchup in the flyweight division. Now, you've been in Singapore for a little bit already. How's that experience been for you? Oh, it's been great. Um, yeah, I was happy I came out early. Um, it definitely took a little time for me to adjust to the time difference. Um, but, you know, training out, I've been training at Evolve. Um, they've been really great to me. Uh, opening the gym to me, letting me train there when I need to. Um, yeah, then I've just been exploring the city and everything around here, so it's been awesome. I asked you where you were because it's a pretty nice backdrop that you have architecturally, and that's the hotel lobby, so it uh, seems like a pretty nice place. Yeah, they have us in, like, the resorts world here um, in, San in Santosa, so it's, like, kind of, like, another island, I think, like, off the coast of, like, Singapore, so it's an even smaller island. Um, but, yeah, it's a beautiful hotel, so it's been nice. So I did a little bit of math, and you have just over one year to become the youngest women's champion in UFC history. Is that a goal that you've set for yourself? Or are you just taking it one fight at a time, and if it comes, it comes? Yeah, I'm definitely taking it one fight at a time. Um, you know, obviously that would be amazing if I could do that, and I know I know I can. I know I have the ability to. It's just kind of like, do I get the fights, and um, what happens with that? Um, so I feel like for me, I'm not too worried about it because I know for myself that I 1,000% can do it. It just kind of depends on uh, how the division lays out and what fights I get next. Well, I mean, how the division plays out is the interesting part because – Earlier this year, when you had your win over Jessica Andrade, it seemed like a slam dunk. You're going to be fighting for the title. Of course, that would have been had Alexa Grasso fallen short. She did not. She's now the number one pound-for-pound -pound female fighter in the UFC, according to the rankings, and, of course, a rematch with Valentina Shevchenko. And an added wrinkle is that Rose Namajunas has joined your division and is going to be taking on Manon Fior. So uh, there's a lot of moving uh, parts right now. Does that put extra pressure on you to have a dominant performance this Saturday? Oh, yeah, it definitely changed the division a lot, um, and it happened quickly. But, um, you know, I feel like that's good for the division overall, get some hype around it. And, um, you know, I feel like it is, like, uh, the Mano and Rose fight could be a number one contender fight. Me and Talia, obviously, is going to be a number one contender fight. So I feel like it depends on who, how how you win the fight, and I always, always go out there looking for a finish um, every single time. So I want to have an impressive finish, and I know winning fights like that gets you even closer to a title. Do you somehow circumvent pressure by... U utilizing, I guess, internal pressure versus external pressure. Rather than the expectations of other people, you kind of put the pressure on yourself internally and, and put high expectations on yourself to perform rather than worrying about what other people have to say about how things are going to go. Yeah, I definitely. I've always, um, I've always held myself to, like, my own standards. You know, I mean, people always have something to say, whether it's negative, positive. Um, so I always have certain standards for myself. And, yeah, I mean, I know what I can do, and I train for it, and... Yeah, I'm ready to show it off. Your last opponent, Jessica Andrade, I think she's fought two or maybe even three times since she, she faced you earlier this year. And now she's lined up again in November. Are you surprised to see something along those lines where a fighter's just taking so many fights in a year? You know, early on January, she looked incredible against Lauren Murphy. And now people are starting to really write her off, it feels. Yeah, I think she's fought twice um, since we fought. And she has another fight lined up. So it'll be like her fourth fight this year, I believe. Um, you know, I, I know, I mean, I, I honestly, I feel like she's just looking to make some money and um, fight as much as she possibly can. Um, but, uh, you know, that's kind of, that's on her right now. I feel like the matchup against Mackenzie Dern is extremely favorable for her in terms of the style. But again, we're seeing her, you know, she's now lost three in a row. And again, all coming this year, it feels like it might be a little bit too much too soon. But at the same time, again, if you, if you can get a good stylistic matchup, sometimes it's worth taking. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Mackenzie is a dangerous fight. Um, you know, I think if Mackenzie can get her hands on her and take her down and, and get her to the floor, create some type of scramble, she should definitely get the submission. Um, yeah, I feel like she probably should have taken some time, especially, like, I know the fight in May. I believe she got knocked out. So to fight that quick again in August and then fight again is probably not the best idea just for your overall health. Um, and I, I, I don't... And, and Tank is on someone like Mackenzie, who's such a dangerous opponent, um, and it has great submission ability, is definitely risky. Um, so I don't know if that's the best fight to take for her right now. Now, Tyler Santos, your opponent on Saturday, what can you tell me about her game and how you feel that you match up with her? Yeah, you know, Talia is a, she's a well-rounded fighter. Um, she did great against Valentina, and that was her last fight about over a year ago now. Um, I don't see anywhere where she's like spectacular. You know, she's solid everywhere, but she definitely has openings like everybody else. Um, and I'm excited to capitalize on them. 
How do you think Rose Namajunas does in your division? She's always fought at 115 pounds. Of course, was on the taller side for that division. I think she'll probably be about average size at, at flyweight. Uh, how do you think she matches up against Manon Fior and she will do in, in your division? Yeah, you know, I think Rose is a very talented fighter. Um, coming up to 125, I think is going to be a pretty big jump, especially if she's someone that I don't believe. I mean, like I said, you don't know unless you're her, but I don't believe her weight cuts to 115 were anything too crazy. Um, she seemed to make it pretty comfortably um, throughout her career. So I don't know if to move up to 25 is the best decision. Um, the girls are going to get bigger and they're going to have more strength and power than she's used to. Um, and I think Manon is a pretty hard fight to go into right away at 125. She's a big girl herself and big for 125. Um, so I think it could definitely be a little tough for Rose. I mean, she's a talented fighter, so you never know. But I think it definitely gives a huge edge to um, Manon. Did you watch the title fight this past weekend, Zhang Li against Amanda Lemos? And if so, did you take some sort of inspiration from that? Because that's about as lopsided a performance as you'll see at the championship level. Yeah, I, you know, I actually haven't yet because I was going to watch it, but then our uh, streaming thing, I guess, in Singapore kind of got messed up, so I haven't been able to watch it yet. But I, I'm super pumped. I want to watch it, and uh, I heard it was a great fight. I hope I didn't just spoil it for you. I, I, I hope you know the outcome of the fight. I didn't just ruin the, the night for you. Oh, no, no, I knew it. I saw it on, like, Instagram and um, all over uh, online. I just haven't seen the actual fight yet. Yeah, pretty crazy knockout by Amanda Lemos. So very exciting times for Brazil. Yeah, yeah, um, that's definitely... I'm, I'm just messing with you. I was just pretending that Amanda Lane uh, was, the one, I was so, like, that, so that you're more surprised when you do yeah. watch the fight. Yeah, yeah, I was like, wait, did I miss that fight that you were talking about? Now, I know um, Whaley won and everyone was saying a super dominant performance, um, so I want to see that one for sure. Yeah, it should, be, it should be a good one, as should be uh, your fight against Tyler Santos this Saturday. Uh, very exciting times in the flyweight division. We're seeing so many uh, incredible up-and-coming fighters, two of which also competed again. If you haven't seen the event yet, but you have, you have some new company, uh, two new entrants into the, uh, the flyweight rankings, and we're seeing a lot of uh, great contenders being built up. Yeah, no, I did get to watch those two fights. Um, the first two fights in the part, I believe, were flyweight fights, so I was obviously interested in that, and our streaming thing is still working. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Natalia Silva and um, I forgot the other girl's name. Karina Silva. I think they're both very. Oh, Karina Silva. Yeah, um, they're both very good fighters. Um, they I've I've watched the, their fights before, um, and I feel like they're definitely people that are coming up in the division. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, this is a division that I, you know, two years ago was really stagnant. I would say, like, I think it's kind of fair to say that. Uh, does it excite you to see all of these up and coming fighters that? Uh, essentially, you're going to be matched up with down the road. It seems like foregone conclusion. We're going to see you against a lot of really good up-and-coming challengers. Yeah, for sure. That's why I always watch, um, especially when I saw those two fights. I definitely wanted to watch it because uh, I plan on fighting for a while longer, and, and I know that they're good, so I wanted to see that. And um, I think having those people come into the division, having like someone like Rose come in is great. Having someone like myself come in, um, someone that could become like the youngest champion, adds so much... Um, you know, like fire to the division that I needed, and it's really exciting to see it grow. Is it hard for you to not feel rushed, right? Like, I mean, you are so young. As I mentioned, you'd be the youngest champion in women's uh, history in the UFC if, if you win the championship within uh, one year. But, I mean, do you, do you sometimes have to kind of pump the brakes mentally and say, okay, like, I have a lot of time. It doesn't need to be within the next year or anything along those lines? Uh, you know, it's funny because I, I literally never think of that. Like, oh, I could be the youngest champ. I, I've since I've gotten this fight with Talia, I've only thought about uh, my fight with Talia, uh, what strategies want to apply, what I've been training for, my training schedule for it, um, dieting for the fight. That's the only thing that's been in my mind. I almost like forget that um, that I could still become the youngest champ because I haven't even really thought about it. Um, and I think that's why I've been winning and doing well because I, I stay super focused and I don't let anything else like influence that. Do you have long-term goals? Like, do you have them written down anywhere along those lines? I know some fighters have vision boards and things like that. Do you, do you look at that kind of thing? Um, you know, I definitely, like, obviously my long-term goal in, um, in the UFC is to become the champion and uh, hold it as long as I can. Um, I don't have anything necessarily written down. I do like to journal and stuff sometimes, like, throughout camp just to see how I'm feeling and anything that's going on in my life to kind of put it on paper and clear my thoughts. Um, but that's kind of more like an immediate thing. I know that, that my long-term goal is to be the champ, and it's something that's always been in my head since I was a kid, so I feel like it never really leaves my head. It's always there. 
All right, well, one step further this Saturday, yourself against Tyler Santos. I uh, really appreciate your time, Aaron. Thanks for this. Yeah, thank you.